October 18th, 6 p.m. With around 250 Occupy Sacramento participants present for the meeting, almost 40 citizen speakers shared their perspective with the Sacramento City Council. Here's the uncut and unsatisfactory response given by our elected representatives. Occupy movement's going. Uh, each city, it's a little different. Um, but I'm convinced you are on the right side of history, uh, and I'm there with you. And I, w I would like to see uh, this city leadership be there with you as well. The, there are many voices out there. We, we hear anger, we hear despair, disappointment, uh, but we also hear hope, uh, conviction, a uh, sense of community, a sense that things can be done, um, that change can be done for the better. So I, in particular, uh, believe what uh, one speaker said, that, uh, that we've spent the last 15 years with a lot of apathy in this country. Uh, and it's good to see that people are not being apathetic and that they're out speaking their mind about what's right and what's wrong in this country and in this community. And um, the social and economic equality, the inequality, that seems to be at the root of much of the um, movement here is certainly something that's gotten much, much worse over the last 15 years. Um, so I support your right uh, to occupy Chavez Plaza um, for the Marine veteran who was trying to count votes there. <laughs> uh, I do believe it has to be subject to reasonable restrictions, time, place, manner, but um, I believe it's possible to work something out where, where we can ensure you can um, keep your equipment out in the park, that, that whoever is necessary to, to uh, be there to secure that so that you don't lose hours in the morning and in the evening putting that together. So that's not the same thing, just to be clear, as doing away with the camping ordinance. It's, it's supporting the right to protest and including the, the means you need to, um, to keep that protest going. Um, also, to the protesters, um, please buy something once in a while from the small businesses uh, like Cafe Soleil and La Boo. And I know some of you are, but they can use your help. Uh, we've lost a lot of small businesses not Wall Street businesses, small businesses, all around our downtown have suffered tremendously during this uh, down period. The state with the furloughs hasn't helped. It's made things much, much worse. I know a lot of you don't have much to spend, but some of you do. Please spend it with some of our local businesses. They, they really can use the help, especially right here around the park, because Although it's not your intent, there will be some people who, who may 
not come downtown because they hear about the protest. You need to make up for them. Make sure they have plenty of business. Tell your friends, family, come down, help, help our downtown businesses. Heck, all of our small businesses in the city. Um, I also um, want to uh, take up John Kranz, who proposed that we start drafting um, some kind of statement of principles. Uh, you mentioned a resolution. I, I would like to, to see if we can work on that, because that's one thing I haven't actually seen is uh, a clear statement of what everyone agrees on. Certainly everyone here agrees on the right to occupy Chavez Plaza and the right to peaceful protests and the right to free speech and free assembly under our Constitution, um, which is important in and of itself. But we know the movement is more than just that, because the Ku Klux Klan could ask for the same thing. The movement is more than that. And so I think it would be helpful to, to try to put that down. So I, I'd be uh, more than happy to, as one of the gray hairs, John, <laughs> to, uh, to work on that. Thank you. All right. Um, so you've heard from any other council member who wanted to make comment at this point? Uh, council member Ashby. <coughs> It's a lot, you know, I mean, I went over there too, and uh, I was welcome to, and it was a small turnout that day, um, but there, you know, nonetheless, I had an opportunity to speak with some of you, right? And we had some good conversation. Um, I had a hard time in the, at that meeting kind of getting my mind around it because, as, as you know, there were some folks with very different issues that they were out there representing, and, and they did not agree amongst themselves, which is okay, because the issue here is really just an opportunity to speak and be heard, and I get that, and I think we do all support that. How we support that, and I told you this last week from me, how we support that is what we need to decide here, and I think Council Member Cohn is trying to take us down a path where we can find some type of compromise, the, you know, dealing with the equipment or the essential part of, of what your struggle is with having to get the equipment in and out. Um, I, will, I do want to say just a, a couple of things that I think it's important for you guys to understand, um, first of all, it's not true that there haven't been any injuries yet. There, there has been an injury to one of our police officers. As a, I, hang on. Yeah. I fought for this okay. Okay. Don't tell me to shut up. I did two tours in my life. My friends got killed. 6,000 veterans a year, 18 a day. Don't shut me up. So all I, all I ask, I know emotions are running high, but don't ruin a good thing. You guys have done a very good job tonight. So it's not cancel without one, please. Sorry about that. Okay. First of all, it wasn't the male police officer, it was a female police officer, and she was injured. And, um, so I just want you to know that. They're just bullshitting you. That's all they're doing. So you can see everyone's not peaceful. That's my whole point. Okay? And that sometimes one or two people. Allow for two moments to have a conversation. Please respect Council Member Ashby. Please do that. Yes. Thank you, Mayor, and, and thank you guys for sitting here too. You've been sitting here this whole time. You've been sitting here for weeks waiting for us to come back and say something to you. But I want to tell you the truth. I'm not just going to sit up here and say something that I don't believe to be right. I, it wouldn't be me if I didn't do that, okay? So I'm going to be me, as each of you has been you, and I expect you to be. I absolutely respect your right to say something, and I want to hear what you have to say. Or, you know, I have freedom, too. I could get up and leave, right? And you have freedom, too. You could not vote for me. I heard one person in here say they were from District 1, and, and that's fine. And there may be others, and there are probably tons of others who aren't in the room. But you got to know, I mean, we get emails, too, from people who don't want you in the park. And we have to try to balance that and figure out a way for you to have that voice and at the same time have the community of Sacramento to have their park. Okay? So I'm trying to help you find that balance. And uh, I will be supportive of Councilmember Cohn and his motion and uh, or his suggestion there and how we can 
how we can do that. I don't like the arrests either. I don't like anybody to get hurt. I don't want any of you to get hurt. I don't want any officers to get hurt. I don't want anybody to get hurt. In fact, when I was out there, there were lots of kids, and they seemed to be just fine and doing just fine. There were also loose dogs. Remember that? And there was somebody else, one of you frantically trying to you know, fix that situation. So I think for every time, there, every time that there was something that needed to be repaired, one of you was trying very hard to fix that. And I appreciate that. And I just want to give you one example of why I, I agree with you. And I think the lady here that said she was in District 1, do you live in North Natomas? Okay, so I really appreciate that you're out there because a lot of what you guys are talking about and what we talked about has to do with federal money. My single biggest issue in our district right now is a federal appropriation for a levy. And I can't get it because of the Republican rules around earmarks. And it's very difficult. This effort is helpful in that. So I, I do want to have some type of resolve to help you have a voice and to encourage the city of Sacramento to take a good position in that. But we also have to, I believe, honor and respect the rules we put in place to keep people safe. So we have to find a balance. And that's my, uh, my position as well. Thanks for hearing me out. All right, thank you. All right, so I think most council members have spoken and have listened. So here, here's what I, here will be my advice. Um, anybody else want to speak up? Are we okay for now? All right, so what, well, here's what I recommend. So right now, you guys clearly know there's an ordinance in place, right? You guys know that. And that's part of what your reason for being here today is to let us know that. We've heard from the chief of police, the city manager, et cetera, and they believe that ordinance to stay in place for the moment. Let me, let me, let me finish my thought. So we have already modified it to one degree. Uh, normally, it's sunrise to sunset to dusk. We've extended it to 11 o'clock. There's no one in here who disagrees at all with your right to protest, with your right to assemble, for your right to speak the peace and make sure your voices are heard in a real way. We all actually agree with that. That's not the issue at all. So what I would propose, I think Councilman Cohen was, was trying to get to a place that we think is reasonable. How many of you are going to be out in the park tomorrow? Okay, hands up. Tonight. How many, how, many, how many of you are going to be out Tonight. in the park on Thursday? All of them. Okay. How many are going to be out in the park on Friday, Saturday, Sunday? All right. So what, what I would like to propose is a thought, and it's taking what Council Member Cohen started to get at. Um, I would be willing to come out to the park on the next two or three days and sit down with a group of you hear your thoughts and concerns very specifically on what we want to see happen between now and the next week or the week after, in very short order. Knowing that one option is a county ordinance, we know that, so we'll have that dialogue. If that doesn't happen, then what are some other things that we can do to make sure your voices are being heard in a real way? And I've heard a resolution could be one opportunity that we articulate something that we think gets at the nitty gritty for what we believe in Sacramento and speaks up and down the state and beyond the state of California. And I would make a commitment, I don't know if I had this kind of clout, but I would make this commitment that if we come up with some sort of resolution in short order, that I'm going to be going back to Washington in November and I will do my best. Who do we want that letter to go to? Obama. The President. And Congress. <laughs> so wait, wait, okay, hold on. So these are, well, I can't get a letter to everybody. So, so these are the things, these are the things over the next couple days that we can start talking about because we do want to be responsive in a real way. We're not and I, and I, part of those things and I, and I, See, I mean, this, this is not working for me, and you got to let me get my piece out. So, that to me is the first step of a real dialogue. Mr. Carter, you see me walk by the park, I snuck in there, talked to a couple people when you, some of y'all weren't in there, and I'm saying, let's keep that dialogue going in real order. And I would ask you and a small group of folks, we'll choose the time today, I mean tomorrow or the next day, we come out and have this dialogue. And I think that is a huge step in that direction. And I, I know it may not be ideal today, but that is the step that I think we all feel comfortable. And what I would ask is two or three council members to come out with me if they can. So it's not just one person, there's a couple of us. That's us being responsive 
to what you are saying as a community. We all know, wait, hold on, we all know the unemployment rate here is far too high. We all know that the foreclosure rate has been hit. We've been hit harder than almost anywhere else in the country. We know that. We've got to find a way to create jobs and make sure our streets are safe and secure in short order. You guys are bringing that to our attention. But not only are you asking us to do something, when we go out there and have a dialogue, we're going to ask you to be a part of the solution as well. And you guys have taken a step in that direction today, and we've got to be able to continue that. And that's what I would ask over the next couple of days. So I will, I guess I'll coordinate it with, with Mr. Carter. Uh, what's that? I'm sorry. Uh, Okay, I, I think the most important thing here uh, is, as you just said, I just want to say the first thing, the most important thing you did say is to, for us to have dialogue. That's the most important thing, is dialogue, and, and that and we can make that happen. So you just give us the time that is, you're available to, to make that happen tomorrow. It's a farmer's market, so there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, but I'll, I'll make sure it happens tomorrow.
Thank you, Mayor. Um, three things. One is I want to ask the team manager for a report. I know that we've had a lot of work that's gone into it. Uh, uh, and I'm looking for a confirmation. You all just heard what happened inside. Yes! yes. Nothing happened. So, no, something did. Okay? So, something did happen inside, which is that the mayor offered us dialogue. Were we looking for dialogue? No! Okay, so... What are we looking for? A What do we want? A Do we want it now? Okay, so what I would like to suggest is that we depart for our car across the street. And... and These representatives may face tough re-election campaigns should they continue on the wrong side of history and continue to arrest us during our non-violent assemblies in our public park. In our current corporatocracy, you too are likely part of the 99%. Please join us in this experiment in 21st century democracy.